Well, hey guys, I just finished filming a Target Shop With Me video, which should be up already by the time you're watching this. But I was really taken aback by how well stocked the new little Ulta in there is, was. Um, yeah, and it was a really pleasant shopping experience in there. Man, Target has really become like a one stop. It's like a mini strip mall in there. You've got the CVS, you've got Ulta, and then you've got Target. Like, lots of reasons to blow $100. I got this Levi sweatshirt on the Amazonian. It's really comfortable because it's not like a sweatshirt sweatshirt in the sense that like if you were really cold, this would not keep you warm, but it's a good air conditioning buffer. It's not like a winter weather sweatshirt or anything. It's super thin and lightweight, but I like that the branding isn't like massive. Is it just me? I've kind of noticed that the trend of massive branding, has it died down? Because back in like the late 90s, early 2000s, that was the thing. Massive branding logos everywhere. So I'm in this lane and I want to turn left, but as I'm sitting here, I'm wondering, is that even possible? So while I was filming in there, I reminded myself I to tell you guys, I mean, I told you in that video, but if you didn't watch that and you're just a vlog watcher, um, there was a recent study that showed that topical green tea, a topical green tea preparation helped reduce, uh, radiation dermatitis in patients undergoing radiation therapy for cancer treatment. When it comes to cosmeceutical ingredients, it's like I'm always looking out for you guys in the literature. Anything of substance, I'm always looking for anything of substance in the medical literature, Jolly Bee. Jolly Bee is like a Filipino fast food restaurant that we have here comment below on if you have ever eaten there they have this um i've never eaten there i don't think they have a single vegan option but they have this one dish it's like spaghetti noodles and hot dogs and uh, like that's always what's advertised and then i think they're known for their fried chicken anyways we have one right there in case you were wondering Ross and I spotted one of these satin bonnets. I usually get these on Amazon, but they're really helpful to reduce frizz and breakage for your hair. Tokini, that's helpful if your toe squishes. I kind of get that on my right foot. I have like a little callus in between my toes from running. Maybe I need a tokini. Paris Hilton eyelashes. Whoa. Five pairs of eyelashes with glue. have some body products here. Coffee scrub. Oh look, you guys who hate the new Cetaphil reformulation of their cleanser, head on over to Ross because they have the old formula here. Sometimes you can get it on Amazon too. Hemp foot cream. Hemp and coconut, hemp seed oil and coconut oil. Those are emollients. Peppermint oil can give a tingle. There's nothing in this though that's like exfoliating in the sense for targeting callus, but for the feet, for just a basic everyday moisturizer, you really want something very thick and occlusive like an ointment. Like this is labeled a cream, but I don't know how thick it is. Looks more like a lotion, more lightweight. They have Nioxin here. I reviewed this for you guys a few years ago, a year or so ago. Looks like they have a kitty kickboard here. How oh, cute, it comes with little lobster goggles. Ooh, these totes are nice for carrying a lot of stuff. Speaking of maintenance foot cream, this Eucerin Roughness Relief Cream is really good for the feet. Uh, it has urea and it also has lactic acid, I believe, yeah, so feed and ceramides, it's, it's very good. These Mickey Mouse plates, they're kind of cute for outside. They also have bowls. Oh, these are those little 
fidgety poppy things. Pop pops. <laughs> Office supplies. Hey, they have a caboodle here. I think we saw those somewhere else recently together. Erasable gel pens. These are like those friction pens. I came in here I came in here to Home Goods to find something to store my electrolyte powders in for travel. I was kind of thinking of this Emerald Legacy two-way food storage container. Um, but anyways, I noticed, aren't these cute? These little meal prep containers? They have different decorative lids on them. I thought those were pretty. Well, hey guys, I just finished up a run on the treadmill and I <laughs> Look at me, remember a few years ago, I made the New Year's resolution to wear more, more colors and here I am. Not only do I have this bright pink pullover, but I also have bright yellow and blue. And I'm just loving this color scheme. I wanted to update you guys on my running shoes. I'm still loving the Brooks running shoes and this is a newer pair. Um, and I don't know what the particular style is, but I get them on the Amazon, Amazonian. Oh, it's Ghost something something but isn't that a cute color i don't know the heel is like super squishy i wasn't expecting not squishy but high <laughs> um there's a lot of support is what i'm getting at so yeah i've been really happy with these i use them on the treadmill which update on that treadmill i have used that treadmill i want to say at least pretty much every day. I'm, you know, there have been exceptions where I'm, I'm not on the treadmill for sure, but I would say at least six days a week I'm on, I use the treadmill since 2020. Best couple of hundred dollars. I can't remember how much I spent on it. It was a lot, but not too expensive for a treadmill. Man, it has held up. Like if it gave out tomorrow, um, I would say I got my money's worth out of it, but it's still going strong. Um, I don't do like inclines or anything. I just do it flat. It doesn't really, I haven't really tested out the incline feature to be honest with you. Since I have been so into the pool, I got another one of those body glove swimsuits. Yeah, I got another one and I really love this pattern. Isn't it pretty? These um, I've been super happy with. Very comfortable, hold up well, and not too, too expensive. They're UPF 50. Yeah, I really like them. So I went ahead and got another one because I'm going in the, in the pool a couple of times a week and getting my wear and tear out of them. And I also got a new laptop bag in pink, of course. It has a lot of storage. I needed a new bag for work purposes. Um, Yeah. Pouch here for pens, zipper bag here to store like cords or whatever. Oh, I didn't even realize the zipper bag part had pouches. That's great. This is gonna be perfect for all of the little random electronic accessories. That is a long pen holder right there. Anyways, uh, so you've got that and then in here, is where the laptop goes, which is pretty nice. More room for, you can even put a tablet in here too. And there's like enough storage in this part that you could put like your coat or something. And then the back is pretty spacious too. You could put like a little portfolio or something, papers, whatever. And it has a nice strap. Also has a nice handle. Can you Velcro it together? No, you can't Velcro it together, but that's okay. I always find the Velcro thing kind of annoying, to be honest with you, because like, it's fine when you're carrying it to have the Velcro that holds the straps together, but like, then when you want to get in the bag, you got to go <laughs> rip the Velcro apart. It's just kind of annoying. Although I do have to do the Velcro there, but I'm okay with that. Anyways, the other feature of this is this part. If you want, you can hook it onto your little rolly carry-on bag. The hardware for the strap is really pretty. Yeah, the brand is Bag Smart. I have running shoes like I just showed you, but I don't ever use them outside. They're my inside running shoes for the treadmill so that I don't like track in debris and stuff. But check out that heel. It's very, it's got a lot of cushion to it. Cushion neutral. I don't know what that means, but yeah. 
Um, a few years ago, I was really into, I, I always ran an Asics, always. And then, I don't know if they started changing up the glue or what, but I started getting like really sore unexpectedly um, and started to get concerned that that would predispose me to injury or something. I don't know if they changed up the glue or what. They just didn't seem to be lasting or holding out as long. Switched over to Brooks because of you guys encouraged me to do that or recommended Brooks and I've never gone back. Which I have to say, as I sit here and stretch, feels kind of like a breakup. I mean, a pair of running shoes, like the brand of running shoes that you wear, it's like serious stuff. It feels like some kind of a long-term relationship that ended and now you've moved on and you're reflecting on. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I ran a lot of races in ASICs and I don't really run races anymore because honestly, it takes a lot of preparation, not necessarily the training part, cause like I run pretty much every day. Like that's not the big deal to me. It's the um, getting to the race. I know that sounds silly, but I hate waking up early. And now that I live here in Texas, uh, whatever races I would want to do, they're like kind of a drive away. So it ends up being a bigger ordeal. But I feel like people really overstate or misstate or I don't know what the right word is right now, honestly. People always say like, oh, running is so bad on your knees. Is it though? I mean, I've never had any problems, knock on wood, with my knees. Um, where I think running can... Here, let me up a bit. Where I think running can be hard on your body is, at least for me, um, is my pelvis. <laughs> that sounds weird, but like the bones in your pelvis actually end up, I feel like, I'm not a kinesiologist, so take this with a grain of salt, but I feel like they end up taking a lot of impact from the constant load. That and like your shins, you know, your the bones in your legs. But I don't really feel like the knees, at least for me. If you run with like, I don't know, it depends on how you naturally stand and walk and run. I think some people are obviously more prone to, to knee injuries. But. Yeah, the other like the other thing that you can easily develop. Have you guys seen that movie Britney where wears a marathon? Britney runs a marathon. It's really a good movie. But um, one thing that can happen, especially if you increase your speed or your distance too quickly, like you kind of ego run or something, is you can get stress fractures. I don't think I've ever had one, although at one point like many years ago, I did have a period of time where there was like a pain in my, in my, uh, like one of my, I can't even remember where this pain was. And I actually did convince myself that it might be a stress fracture. I didn't, of course, at the time I didn't have time to like go in and get it investigated, but I took off like how many months? I took off a lot, many months just because I knew about stress fractures. I knew they took a long time to heal. I was like, if that's what it is, I want it to heal and I want it to heal properly. So I took many months off and I did like low impact. I did the elliptical and it went away, whatever it was. Where was that? Was it in my, I think it was like my tailbone just felt like, like a, a bad pain when I ran for a while and that went away after I took that time off. But long story short, um, if you were getting into running and you're starting to enjoy it, don't increase your speed or distance too much. Um, how much you should be increasing, don't ask me. I'm not a running professional. But I do know that that is a common, that is a common mistake that new runners make and it's seasoned runners for sure make it as well um i don't know why i'm lying here on the floor but uh, it is making me keenly aware of the fact that i need to run the vacuum cleaner uh yeah that is a good movie Brit Brittany runs a marathon because like she is living this like kind of party girl lifestyle 
that's really, I mean, not only is it unhealthy, but it's really kind of very toxic and, you know, dangerous. Um, you should watch it. I think you would like it. It's a good movie. It's cute. I don't remember the actress's name who was in it, um, but she did a good job. Uh, I saw that was it three years ago. Man, time flies um, when you're having fun. <laughs> uh, you guys, so one of my memory cards uh like died and memory cards are like the little sd card that you put in the camera if you don't know what that is um and apparently they have like a lifespan that varies <laughs> um and as best i can tell i think my sd card overheated because it's been so hot i don't know what else could have caused the problem um, I've done all of the tricks in the book and it really is sad because I, I filmed, I got like a lot of footage, but it's completely gone now <laughs> and I can't get it back because the card is like not viable. I don't know. Like I've tried everything. Like I went online and one guy was like, take a pencil eraser and rub it over the little tines gently. I tried that. It didn't work. Um, but I looked and there's like a little plastic thing and it looks like it is just like melted off. So I think the card is just dead. And I think the reason it died is because it's been so hot because my camera will overheat if I film continuously for too long. And it's been hot and I was filming out and about and I think it just cooked it. <laughs> oh man, but... Anyways, um, I'm able to repeat the video content, um, you know, go over the same thing. So that'll just be a little secret between you and me. If you, <sighs> I had a great shower. Um, oh, hair care update. Remember in my hair care empties video, I alluded to the idea that I was interested in trying out some different products for my hair. I'm still using and adoring my function of beauty shampoo and conditioner and hair serum. But when I was in Trader Joe's, I decided to, I think I, I can't remember if I've tried this before. So if I have, and I reviewed it a long time ago, please don't call me out because I, be, I forget sometimes. But anyways, I decided to buy it maybe again, I can't remember, uh, and give it a go. It is their shea butter and coconut oil. Ooh, my hair was stuck to that. Shea butter and coconut oil hair serum. And this is not as good as the Function Beauty one to cut to the chase in terms of what I like and need and enjoy. This, I can't tell that it does anything. The Function Beauty product, hair is like very glossy, shiny. I mean, it is like a miracle worker. I prefer the Function Beauty hair serum to that It's a 10 product. I used to use that, here I go on a tangent. I used to use that It's a 10 product all the time, many, many years ago, before I was ever on YouTube. It came in a, Brinkle box? Why do I want to call it a Brinkle box? It came in a um, birch box. <laughs> there you go. I knew it would come to me. The Function of Beauty one I love so much. And then in a Fat Fit Fun box, I got the It's It's a 10 Miracle product again. Gave it a go. And I was like, no, not as good as the Function of Beauty one. Anyways, all that yammering aside, I've been trying out this Trader Joe's one. It's nice. Um, I think it's more helpful for if you've got frizzy hair, maybe it helps with that. Maybe if you have curly hair, it might help too to just kind of tame the curl pattern. Uh, but for me, it just doesn't do anything. And if I put it on wet hair, it, it just makes my hair smell like coconut, which I like. But the following morning when my hair is completely dry, it's like I don't even have anything on there. And as a matter of fact, I almost kind of think it made my hair ever so slightly a bit more static prone. I've tried it on dry hair too, and it doesn't really, at least for my hair type, it kind of just looks greasy. Uh, but a product that I purchased to give a go is this Moroccan oil uh, heat protectant spray. Now this is basically, this has a perfume fragrance in it. So beware but it's a heat protectant, shiitake mushroom, 
and I've really been liking this a lot because uh, I've been you know what I do uh, is I get out of the shower at night as you guys know, uh, towel out, towel dry my hair so that it's like 95% dry, it's still damp though. And I just spray a bit on there and I really like the scent. So that is pleasant. It doesn't linger long though. Then I just do my typical twisty. So I twist my hair up, pin it up, stay up for a while. By the time I go to bed, my hair is like 99.5% dry, whatever. This doesn't like seem to transfer to my pillow or leave stains or anything. And then the following morning, my hair is 100% dry. And then I know it sounds weird, but that's when I use my blow dryer to just kind of heat style my hair a bit. And I've been really enjoying this product. Um, I do like it. And yeah, so I wanted to share that with you guys along with the Trader Joe's hair serum. I did buy the Trader Joe's hair mask because I wanted to see how it compared to my other favorite hair mask, which I also repurchased, the Biolage Hydrosource. This, I love. This works really well, really well, really well for my hair type. I use this on days that I use clarifying shampoo. As a matter of fact, I need to get a new clarifying shampoo because I am out. I was using that Garnier Fructis one for a while there, but I need to try another clarifying shampoo. But I find that styling products, I just don't, I don't know, they never look right on my hair. I don't have, I don't have the finesse needed, I guess. Anyways, you guys, I'm gonna wrap this vlog up here. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.